happened in some churches and the fact that you are taught how to commit these uh, fraudulent miracles. What should, be, what should people be aware of? And maybe you can even start by telling us how some of them are done. Okay. Um, when we talk about a staged miracle, we talk about what is organized. Number one, when a pastor says that tomorrow there will be a miracle, you know, when you talk about a miracle, it's something that should shock even the pastor. Mm. But if the pastor is aware of mm. what is going to happen, it's no longer a miracle, it's staged and arranged. Mm. So in most of the time, they organize people on the wheelchair, they give them money, they come sit on the wheelchair. So before that day, the pastor will talk about the kind of miracle that will be happening on that night. So they know particular, we've got people that will be seated on the wheelchair. And we also have this stage miracle of miracle money. Mm. Usually uh, before the church starts, they call people who are in the church to come on the stage for what we call a chain prayer. And while you are here, some of the ushers, remember, the pastor does not work alone. It, it's, mm. a, it's a mafia, it's a syndicate in the church. Mm. So they work with the ushers, they work with those, uh, uh, the car guards outside. Sure. So once people are here in front, those ushers, they will insert money in people's bags as we are praying, closing our eyes. Mm. Now, when the prophet comes on stage, he says, there's a miracle money, check your bags. Once you open your bag, you will see the money and you don't know where that money come from. It was arranged. In other instead, they collect information. Once you sit in the church, uh, those ushers ask you, where do you come from? What's your name? What's mm. troubling you? So they collect information. They send it through WhatsApp mm. to their pastor. So that is the reason why most of these uh, cult pastors, they come to church late because they have to receive data first. The data that they will use to prophesy people once they have gained let's say 20 people with information what is troubling you they come on stage they've rehearsed your name and when they call your name especially our brothers from outside the country they speak as if they don't know how to pronounce your name so you think it's authentic hmm. while it was organized so this is like a play it's like a stage play yes okay so what was the turning point in your life what made you go i'm done uh my background as a pastor's kid who looked up to his father, we have been in the ministry all along, being authentic to God. It, it, it became a voice that spoke to me and said, this is not the kind of life that you should live. Because once you have joined, you are living a secret life. You are in a secret society. You hide things. Mm. Yes. In your book, Church Mafia, you also speak about keeping all of this a secret from your wife, the congregation, apparently your wife not really buying into this this dark way. I mean, take us through that moment, that part of your life as well. I, I lived a secret life for, 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 some, for some time because of even my trip to Nigeria, I had to lie. And even the, the room where I had to put all these spirits, I told my wife not to enter there. Before I go to church Saturday night, I have to, to go uh, into those spirits to, to, to speak to those altars. So all along, I lived a, a, a secret full life. But there are others, they join with their wives these days. <laughs> what was in that room that you hid in your house? Uh, it was more of the calabash. Uh, the traditional pots mm. and uh, the other one it was bottles that had some particular oils the oils that we used in the church that is where you take those oil then you mix with other oils so that whosoever that will use the oil they will remember you and they will be hooked up to your church one question uh, that really is sticks out for me is what is your biggest regret in all of this my biggest regret is how I deceived people, how, mm. uh, you know, if you do something knowing it is not okay by mm. itself, it's, it's deception, how I lied to the body of Christ, how I lied to South Africans, and that is uh, the biggest regret. But on top of that, uh, I said to myself, I will be a voice to warn others. And even the same people that I have deceived, I had an opportunity to go back to them and close the church and tell them, you need to go and look for the true church. Okay, and sure. where can people get the book, uh, Pastor? The book people, they can get it online. It's available. Maponya Mall is available. Exclusive books is also available and also on social media. Thank you so much, Pastor, for coming through and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank we you really so much. appreciate Mo. it. Thank you. Uh, and that's how we wrap up tonight's show of Trend.